Hello. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about working backwards. Um, as we mentioned in strategies on how not to get stuck, working backwards is an imperative strategy if you want to do well on hard questions. So working backwards questions often, often involve hard algebra, but you're not going to be able to plug in numbers. So if you feel like the problem is algebraic and you can't make up numbers, ask yourself if you can work backwards. The approach is fairly simple. This is the old plug and chug strategy. We're going to be plugging in an answer choice. We're going to start with answer choice C. And we're going to see if that answer works. If it does, we're done. And oftentimes it is C. If it doesn't, then we're going to go on and try A or B or D or E. So really, there's only three essential steps to working backwards. Number one, you're going to try answer choice C first. Again, most of the answers are, most answer choices are labeled in least to greatest. So trying C will give you a good idea of where you should go from there. If C seems too big, generally you want to try A or B. If C seems too small, generally you're going to try D or E. And, then, and that's actually step two, is just making the move to either A or B or to D or E. And lastly, whatever answer satisfies the, the criteria is the right choice. So you really don't have to do too much work. Once you've found the right answer you, and it's worked for the question, you're good. So let's go through one expl uh, explanatory problem here to make sure you understand what we're going to do. This is a simple concept but fairly hard to utilize because it's often challenging to recognize when you need to do it. So that's the most important thing. Again, you want to look for algebraic problems where you cannot make up numbers. And the answer to the question is going to, the, the, the answers are going to be things that you can plug back into the question. So this question says, is the sum of three consecutive multiples of three is 45. What is the smallest of these numbers? So we're going to try choice C, 15. If we do, and we add 15 plus 18 plus 21, we get 54. Now we wanted the sum to be 45, so we know that C is too large. So we can cross out C, D, and E right, right off the bat. So now since it was close, let's try answer choice B. Trying answer choice B, which is 12, yields 12 plus 15 plus 18, which is indeed 45, and we're done. Again, look at this question and ask yourself, if you didn't have answers, how you would do it. You would probably have to create an equation. Remember, we don't want to make up algebra on the SAT. We want to make up numbers when we see variables, and we want to work backwards when we can't. So now we're going to try some SAT quest questions and give you a little bit more feel for how to make up numbers on a variety of questions. 